Well, we'll get started. Kind of a light crowd, but it's on, it's 12 o'clock, so we'll get started. I think maybe our videotapes are, uh, and being on TV may be driving our live audience away. That's not a good thing, so I don't know. But um, welcome. Um, see, we have a new face. Always welcome. So <laughs> um, nice to have another audi audience member here today. So um, Adam's parent, too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as we've been doing, we've been presenting um, some of our um, new and innovative type of uh, curriculum and instructional throughout the year. And so uh, this is another area that we've been working on for a couple of years and um, two, a couple different components I think they're going to be thrown at you today uh, with Melissa and Jeff leading the way. And so we're, we're calling it personalized learning, you know, one of the big things about technology and um, we got devices and districts continue to move forward and um, we tried to define what technology may mean to learning and one of the things we keep talking coming up with is the ability to personalize education for students is one of the things that this tool may be able to do for us. From there, without taking your thunder, I'll introduce Melissa Toner, and Melissa can tell you her very long title there up on the screen as well and start. So. <laughs> Instructional Technology and Media Curriculum Specialist. Last time I said that, I got a little tongue-tied. Um, so today what I wanted to do is give you a little bit of an overview of what personalized learning is. Um, you hear a lot about it if you read any you know educational magazines but really what we're looking at is the foundation for having multiple ways to instruct students to reach them and it's really student centered so if you look at this diagram the students in the center but then when we talk about personalized learning there's lots of different st strategies and tools that we have available for us to use so that we can help all students learn and achieve their learning goals so what does the state of Michigan say about it? Um, if you take a look at this, um, this came right off of the Michigan um, website for the Department of Education. And when you talk about personalized learning, essentially it is student-centered learning. And how do we do that? How do we meet the needs of students? How do we individualize um, the instruction so that it meets their interest and their strengths? And so, to our advantage, we have new technologies that are available for us to use, and um, we have our one-to-one -one devices that really help us individualize instruction. We're doing some things for interventions and individualizing without the technology, but the technology can enhance that. And so this is just a diagram that shows you, um, this is a widely accepted, uh, I guess, the core four philosophy for personalized learning. There's the piece of it, if you look in the right hand, well, it'll be your left hand, um, flexible content. And so we're going to talk a little bit about blended and online learning and targeted instruction, which when we're doing targeted instruction, we're talking about standardized, we're talking about the content standards. And then student reflection and ownership, things like student-led um, projects or problem-based learning, things like th that students are learning with Project Lead the way where they're posed with a problem and there could be multiple solutions and students are reflecting and taking ownership of their learning. And then the other piece of it is data-driven instruction so, and decisions. So rather than just uh, assuming that you teach the content and everybody who's in class that day, they understand it, you can, you can pick up on things as a teacher, but with data-driven decisions, we can actually look at the data, drill it down to the content standard to find out, did that student master that content. And if they didn't, where did they fall short? What can we do to intervene? Or maybe they've mastered the content and we need to extend the learning. And that's where this personalized learning comes in. What are we doing already um, in Midland Public Schools? This is, um, when you see MTSS, you're, you're actually going to be seeing more of this, but it's multi-tiered systems of supports. We already have things like positive behavioral intervention practices and strategies that we use and response to intervention, so RTI. And part of RTI is um, finding out where the student needs, what, where the student's at and where they should be, and then also extending if we need to. And so really there are two tiers. The first tier in RTI is identifying the needs, and then the second tier is where this personalized learning comes in, where you can individualize the instruction to help bring the student up to where they need to be. But what we're looking at now is this whole umbrella, MTSS framework, where we're looking at the whole child. So it's not just how they do in reading, but we're looking at all aspects of learning and what contributes to the success of a student's overall learning. 
some specific tools that fit into that framework for um, personalized learning. Um, I quoted from the, there's a white paper, a research paper out there on flexible content and tools that help you target instruction. And we're already doing these things. That's what's exciting about this. And um, I'm going to start with elementary. When I started trying to come up with all the examples, there were so many of them that I tried to just narrow it down to a few so I can give you a few examples. But if you have more questions and would like to know more, um, there are lots of things that we're doing. So for example, um, when we're talking about adaptive content, that's where a student is, for example, I'll pick out um, Moby Max and Dreambox. Those are math programs that some of our elementary students have access to. And with Moby Max and Dreambox, it's really adaptive learning because the student, it's kind of in a game format and they're learning at the same time. But it identifies where the student has not mastered that content and then it gives them some um, review and practice and then they keep moving along at their pace. With Epic Books, when it comes to reading, that's an ebook <coughs> app that we, now that we have our one-to-one -one devices, the students can access this and that's more in the teacher's control where the teacher can assign books for students to read on their Lexile level. In other words, the level where they're at with a goal of increasing that reading level. But what makes it nice, and I witnessed this in a fourth grade classroom last year, all the students had their reading time, they had their devices, they were all reading, but no one, the other students really didn't know at what level each student, their peers were at, but yet each student is working on increasing their reading skills. And so uh, the teacher really has more of a control, they can assign the reading or the students can have choice there. Google Suite is across the district. We are using it for things like collaboration. Students work on projects collaborating even for all the way from elementary to um, seniors in high school. And there's the Google Classroom that also allows teachers to differentiate. So maybe there's the basic lesson that's out there and students will access the materials, but a, a teacher could put thing, um, materials out there for extension or maybe for reteaching. And that includes things like videos, and documents. As I mentioned, Project Lead the Way um, really is ideal for this kind of personalized learning because the content is um, shared with the students in multiple ways and the students are posed with a problem and then they come up with a solution and there could be more than one solution to that problem and so that takes that learning back into the student's responsibility. Some of these other things I have on the slide, for example, Illuminate DNA, the district has this uh, software that we use, and it can help us identify where content standards are mastered, what the proficiency levels are for students, if it's used in a way where we uh, maybe associate a content standard, standard with a question on an assessment. But there are lots of other ways to do that as well, but Illuminate helps us do that. Another, um, I don't know if this term is familiar or not, it's kind of new, um, in Michigan, open education resources. These are resources that teachers can access and students for free, but you can choose things to help extend lessons. They have textbooks that are free. They have interactive textbooks. So for example, um, when I went to an open education summit in Michigan, uh, one of the school districts there shared where their third graders helped collaborate to create a textbook in their classroom. And what was nice about that is the students added content, of course with the teachers um, vetting that, but the students added content and the teacher could add links and other documents to help extend and personalize the learning. So we have a lot of potential there that we're just starting to tap into. Uh, secondary, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the same things are available <coughs> to us. We have apps and extensions through Google that we're using to help personalize learning. And one thing that we're going to focus on today is blended and online learning. And blended and online learning really fit very well in those core for personal learning um, strategies. So if we look at the blended learning model, just to give you an idea of what it is, because you hear blended learning term, term thrown out there, hybrid learning, it's really the same thing. But there are different models of it. So if it's blended, the students spend some time face to face with teachers and then they have some flexibility in when they complete the content or learn the content outside of that face to face session. 
So when, you, when we took, look at this, there are different ways that you can present a blended learning model. And we have some guests here today that are going to share um, one of those models but I'm gonna, and their experience with it. But I'm just going to give you the quick overview of it. There's the rotation model. And that's where students come to class every day to the classroom. And the teacher, um, it's determined which days they're going to do traditional face-to-face -face types of activities, activities. So it could be group work, it could be um, mini lessons, that kind of thing. But then there are specific days that the students do their online work. But what's nice about it is the teacher can set it up any way they want to personalize it. So they could have rotation and stations. And so if you break up into groups, then the teacher can work with maybe this group that needs a little more help. Or maybe the teacher can put groups together to help each other. And so there's a lot of flexibility in this model, and yet it's not just your traditional where the teacher is the sage on the stage, you know, giving all the information, but the students are investigating it, and there's a mix between the using the technology and the face-to-face. -face. In the flex model, we don't especially have a, um, I was going to say, a specific course that's taught in this manner, but my suspicions are when you look at the, con or the components of this, it's probably happening in our classrooms. But this is where students move through the content in a way that they may, and this may happen maybe in one class period or part of the day where the students have choice and they might decide, they decide what they're going to do first and they're using technology and the teacher's instruction and modeling. A la carte, I think this really fits in with paths. I was thinking about what we're doing with paths um, program, which Jeff is going to talk about in a little bit. But it's an online learning accompanied by other brick and mortar activities. So students that have a, maybe a regular schedule in the regular classroom are taking additional courses online. And then we have the enriched virtual model. And this is the one that we're going to explain a little bit more about today. But with the enriched virtual model, students will come to class, let's say, I'll just give an example, fixed days, maybe two days a week, and then three days a week they work on the content outside of the classroom setting. So what we have so far um, in Midland Public Schools for this school year, we have advanced business course that's being offered in the enriched virtual. And we have social studies, um, modern global topics. But the good news and the exciting news is we're going to add more to that um, selection for our students. Last summer, we had seven teachers trained to be able to teach a blended learning course. And we're using the um, Moodle which is a, it's an LMS, it's a learning management system, so we're going to be consistent. All of our blended courses are using Moodle. And then each of our courses are um, vetted through the curriculum department. We have a series of checks and balances that we go through. First the teacher, teacher leader, and then the curriculum department. And uh, we go through and we are checking to make sure that the components of the course include the strategies that are best practices for blended and online learning. And also we've included um, best practices as far as um, 5D plus, which, which is the teacher evaluation tool, which is also based on best research and education. So these are the additional courses that are on the course offering guide right now, and students are registering for them for next year. We have um, history, point two history, and that's going to be at a rotation model. And then point to economics, the rest of them are enriched virtual. Point to senior English, sociology, and point for economics. So we're, we're growing in this area. And so now what I thought we'd do is invite our guests up here to share their experience. Before they, be, when I asked them, before they came, I gave them a list of, of questions and maybe things to ponder that maybe you could share with us. So, um, Hadley and Julia, if you would like to come up, and would you like to come up too? <laughs> All right, come on up. I'll put the questions up there. That way you have a prompt too. But um, feel free. Um, these are the things I ask them ahead of time, but if you have other things you want to say, please feel free to. I may ask them how blended learning is different from a traditional classroom. How does it offer flexibility in learning? How do you access the content? And then what does a typical face-to-face -face day look like compared to a blended? And then uh, what are some challenges? Because I'm sure there must be some challenges there too. And then what are some benefits? So I'll just let you pick and you know choose how you want to Yeah, I think share. we're just going to go through each question. Yeah. OK, um, that's perfect. So 
So blended learning for me is different than traditional classroom by just like having my own time to do it and work at my own pace, which is um, a lot more convenient. Um, I mean, you're basically learning the same material, material and you're like going about it the same way. Because um, in a traditional classroom anyway, we're mostly doing things online through Google Classroom and like um, assignments online already. So we just aren't required to come to class that day, so we have more time to do um, other things. Yeah, it just provides more flexibility. So like people with jobs and don't have, or a lot of extracurriculars or she has her own business, it just provides a lot more time to do things um, that you need to do and then do your learning at your own pace when you... What, what class is this that you're talking about? So is we're, it, is we're, it all your classes or just, it, I'm just asking. Just we're talking about advanced business. Advanced, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah Miss J sure. teaches that. Um, yeah. But there's also, I've taken Global Topics, which was the other one she talked about, okay. and, I take, and I'm taking Advanced Business. So, this so is it's really, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, flexibility in learning the content. So yeah, again, going back um, to the time, you have more flexibility in how long it takes you to do a subject. People work at different paces um, anyway. So like if it's just easier um, and like more convenient to, I would say personalize how people go about things. Like it might take someone five minutes to do something or it might take someone else 20 minutes so you aren't at different paces in a classroom, you're at different paces outside the classroom working on your Yeah, and you time. can focus on things that maybe you don't understand as well as someone else does and spend more time on one assignment as someone might spend more on another assignment. Or you could always go into like the classroom, um, not on a meeting day, and meet with the teacher and um, like get more information and help. Yeah, when we, when we don't meet, that doesn't mean you can't go into the room. They still give you an option where you can go to the class and you can go in there and have one-on-one -on -one time during the hour and meet with teachers and other students. So it's not like you can't come in and you can't do something. You're still able to come in when you need to. Um, so we access um, the course content and materials for advanced business specifically on Moodle. So we just go through there and we have our own little class and you just click on it and everything's there. Yeah, and she, Miss J divides it up by modules. So like each chapter, we just have to have, she'll have a due date for each module and we have to have all the assignments done by a certain day. And then we have like a week that we need to have our tests done to come, we have to come into class to get our tests done. Um, and then also like um, for global topics, it's a combination of Google Classroom and Moodle, mm -hmm. but both of them use Moodle. And then, so the typical face-to-face, -face, we usually do testing or we do projects where we need partners. Um, like recently we did a project about a business, um, yeah. me and Julia were partners. So we do a lot of projects and testing on the days that we meet. And then we also just go over all the content we learned and then what's going to be on the test when we come in the next week. Yeah. The challenges? Yeah, the challenges. Um, I would say like prioritizing is kind of difficult for me. I own my own business and I'm an associate photographer for Captured. Um, and I have all these different things going on. So it's sometimes hard to find when like the time to do it. Um, so it's just like scheduling time and in like, yeah, day. pacing it so you're not just trying to rush to get it all done like right before it's due. Yeah. And then the benefits. Um, obviously for me it gives me, I have so many opportunities um, so I'm able to take advantage of the opportunities that I have business wise and career wise so I'm able to work on what's going to happen to me outside of high school so when I graduate now instead of having to push it later in the day or not being able to do it because I'm in class, I'm not in class so I have the opportunity to go and do different things. Yeah, just provides more flexibility and time to do, get other stuff done and not worry about that specific class. You have time to work um, like around your schedule. Thank you. Any, any so other questions? I'm trying to picture a, a day in the life of, so you're, I'm assuming it's two days that you have to report to? The For advanced course? business, we meet once a week. Yeah. Okay, and so it's, that's one of the periods during your schedule? Yeah, it's built into it's our, our sixth schedule. hour. Yeah. It's sixth hour. So yeah. What's happening then is the other four days, you're just, you either leave school or do yeah, other yeah, things yeah. early. Or you can always go into class still, yeah, too, if you right. want. Yeah. But the days that you don't have to be there, you're just managing that, that period. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And is it always at the end of the day? Yeah. The it's always, um, so they try not to, like, leave a gap in your schedule. So it's nice how it's six hours, so we don't have to come back or, like, leave. Okay. So we can just, like, leave and not have to come back for the rest of the day. Yeah. When's your other... Um, your other blended class? Yeah. My other blended class, when I took it, was fifth hour. So I had it fifth and sixth hour, so I could just leave after fourth. Um, mm -hmm. And it was super convenient. 
And then mine was fourth hour, so that it like ran in with my lunch, so I got to go home for lunch and I can work on my assignments and um, eat lunch at home and then just make it back for my fifth hour. They have it set up where it's not like super confusing and you're not just like leaving, coming back, leaving, coming back. Yeah. It's um, at a time of day where it's, it works and you just don't have to come back. And do you find that you're spending less time on the class than if you took the class traditionally? The same, same course content, same material. Do you, like, you would have been required to be in class five hours, about five hours a yeah. week. Do you find that you're learning the same content in less time? I think I'm definitely, yeah. co we're covering the same exact content we would in class. Like, there's like a lot of fluff, like people talking, taking yeah. time to move around, and stuff like that. Just, just like I guess I don't, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. but, but like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But we're just, it's just like you're it doing it, yeah, out. yeah. It's just, well. Oftentimes, online learners will tell you they actually feel like they put more hours of actual work. Yeah. Um, because they're at, when they when they do the assignment, they're working. Where in class, you do have that a lot of collaboration on there. Um, so the other the other thing I'll tell you that research has kind of been saying on the teacher side of it, um, and this is for University of Down. Remember, this is a great practice because all these young ladies are going to get many blended courses coming at them in college, um, coming forward. And so the most. Uh, um, people who teach those courses will say they actually somehow get, feel like they get to know their student better than they do when there's 28 of them sitting in a right. classroom or they're seeing 120 in a day that they actually get to know a lot because sometimes they're collaborating online in small groups or one-to-one -one and they get to know a lot and make those connections and hence the word personalize a little bit some of that. I think that we have more time when we do assignments like the getting to know um, your students like Miss J, at the beginning of the year, we had to do like a project about us, and like she was able to see that and like read about us and not like have, to, I don't know, it's just easier so yeah, she's not like having to talk to us yeah, and like, get to know. Yeah. In a traditional class, it's more like uh, the first day you like get to know everybody's names, and maybe we'll go around and do like an icebreaker, like a couple facts about yourself, or two truths and a lie, or whatever. And with this, like she said, with we did a project about ourselves. It's it, more in depth. Yeah. It's a good example. Any other questions? Huh? My, my son's in their class. Well, I don't know if he's in their yeah, class. Yeah, he is. Yeah, um, and he, he said, and you, I think you said it, um, there's parts of he goes like, yeah, 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 okay. And he just gets that part, but then right. there's other parts that he's stalled on, like, oh, I need to, I don't understand right. this. So he can take personally more time on that, right? because the yeah, yeah, yeah part, he got that part, mm -hmm. you know. So he has already said the, that to me, which he had totally loves this class and yeah. feels Thank like you. he's really because he's a senior and he's going to college next year right. for him that's what he's doing and right. this he says it's getting me ready to make good choices of my time yeah we have a whole week so you get to manage and work on your own pace like there was yeah. one project that took a little bit longer in our last module that was about like entrepreneurs and stuff like that and that took a significant more amount of time so I'm glad that I was able to work on that at my own pace and take a couple more days on it than having to turn it in like the next day or something like traditional classes. And then my next question is, is because I have a high schooler coming up, how are they, how are the students approved? Do they have to apply? Like, and what's the numbers that you have? Like, is it, at, like, is it in demand, low demand? For, for my, for the advanced business course, they, um, I recommend that they take computer technology so they have some sort of skills with technology. Um, that's not becoming as significant of a, re a significant of a requirement because all the students are one with one on one to one devices, so they're pretty comfortable with technology. Um, so I do we do look at some some of the the behavior of students like attendance uh, because attendance is a huge issue. Um, if if you see through their freshman and it's a consistent pattern. pattern um, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, they're not having great attendance, probably not an ideal candidate as a senior. Um, you know, a lot of times as freshmen, their attendance isn't great, but then the light bulb comes on like, oh, I probably need to start coming to school a little bit more. So I, I do look at attendance. I do look sometimes at the, the courses that they've taken and how successful they were in some of the courses, um, especially assignment completion. Um, because they're, if you miss an assignment, this class, advanced business, isn't uh, is an I don't want to say easy, but it's not difficult to pass this course as long as you do all of your work. Right. But 
unfortunately there are so, some students who just don't complete the assignments and I've done this now this is my fourth year and when I go back and look at the, the personality of the student um, it should have been something that I would have said yeah they probably weren't the ideal candidate so we don't have really a rubric yet um, set up it's just you just kind of look at their transcripts and um, and see right now that um, for next year we're slated to do two co two sections of advanced business so it is the um, blended model is growing in popularity um, not just advanced business but the other curriculum as well yep I think the blended model is the one that we have the um, the most push towards so we really want to begin to push that more and more as we go forward and um, I think Jeff will share some of the um, purchase models that we use and they work and they've been there and they fit a certain kid but there's some kids that the blend it would be much more better for as well you want to tra are we transitioning I, if, if we are ready to yeah yes. that might be a perfect <laughs> opening for you Jeff how's yeah, that yeah that was a perfect opening thank like you, you very much thank you. Thank, you. thank you I'm gonna skip right here Don't. and hand it over Thanks. I'll put the slides for you <clears throat> My name is Jeff Lauer and I am the uh, principal of the PASS program and the coordinator of our online uh, programs for the district. More, uh, th this line is more along the independent online pieces uh, uh, that we use. Uh, we started this uh, about uh, 10 years ago with the, our e-learning program, which uh, at each building we had a uh, certified teacher at each of the high schools. They are scheduled, these courses are scheduled per period just like uh, regular classrooms, traditional classrooms are. And it was in a computer lab setting. And it was really to help students um, earn credit protection. And that means that they were missing some pieces in their, their current traditional course. And the teacher would then assign them pieces of an online course for them to redo those pieces and, and maintain the credit of that particular course before they actually got to the end of the semester uh, and got their grade. Uh, if they made it to the end of the semester and didn't pass, the other option was for credit recovery. They would take the entire course over. Uh, they would do it online. They could do it at their own pace. If they worked hard, they could get done in a much more timely fashion because it's focused not on all the, the instructional stuff, but on the content. Um, and we did have some students and still do have students that take it for what we call ICE, which is initial credit. It's the first time they've taken these courses and our focus is really to provide some opportunities on some elective courses that they may not have the opportunity to take because there's just not enough kids to be able to offer that type of course. Um, and it worked really well. We had several vendors that we were using. We, we work with Edgenuity and have since the very beginning. And they are our standard course offerings. We manage all that. We use it primarily for the credit recovery. And we've been pretty successful. Between 86% and 94% of our students are successful in recovering those credits that they lost. Um, and of course, the ICE ones, because of course, those are being taken out of interest more than out of requirement. Uh, we, we're at about in the mid 90% range and have been for a long time. We'd also use several other vendors, again, primarily for the ICE piece of it, and so they were successful as well. With that success, uh, about, I think it was about two years ago now this time that uh, uh, I was approached to talk about building an, a different program, one for kids. We, we, we have a great traditional model. Uh, we had a lot of things going for kids but there was just a group of kids that was not being successful in the traditional model and they were leaving the district. Uh, some even just flat out dropping out. And we, we felt we needed something to kind of fill that gap and provide something to these students that might help them be more successful, might get them to graduation, which nowadays that diploma is so very important. So it's to improve graduation rights, uh, rates, uh, provide options, Again, for students, a different type of learning, much like the blended learning, only even more so, and you'll see that in a minute. Uh, keeping students connected to the district, because, of course, we do have some good alternative programs in our community, but when you leave to go to one of those, you are no longer a Midland High student or a Dow High student. In the PATHS program, you still are connected to your high school. You'll still walk across that same stage and raise, 
wear the same colors. You'll still be able to access all the before and after school things that are going on or athletics or any of the things that a traditional student would have access to. Um, and preventing students from dropping out or leaving us. The structure is quite a bit different. I've got two rooms which are at the back side of Midland High School right now. We refurbished them. We added some soft furniture, some tables, some, something different. Tried to make it a little less classroom-like, um, providing some flexible, flexible scheduling. We started last year and it was 9.30 to 12.30. This year we've expanded upon that with increased staff. We are officially open from 9 to 3, but my office is there as well. So kids can come in from the beginning school and stay till 4, 4.30. Um, each student has a personalized plan. And that plan can be a blending of many different options. Online, and I've got many students that are just straight online students. I mix some of our traditional classes with uh, online classes. I also have access to the countywide CTE programs, career and technical ed programs. So I've got some students that are going over to Windover and taking the culinary arts program, but coming back to me for their, their core areas. Um, they have the option to go to either high school program. If they want auto tech, they go to Dow High. Of course, the, the programs at uh, Midland High with the welding and the building trades in the woods. Or they can even go uh, to Coleman for the agri-science program. So what, all those tools are there. It's my job to put them together for each student. And I meet with them individually to make sure that that happens. One of the nice things about it, when, I, when we get to the profile of the students, they only have one administrator and one teacher to get to know. Because for these kids, the tra traditional model, that changing every period, and uh, the environment of a bigger school building can be pretty daunting. And so this way, I get to know them as the administrator. The teacher gets to know them, and they get to know and trust us. And that relationship is critical. We've all heard the saying, they don't care what you know until they know how much you care. Well, that's part of what this is about, too. We also incorporate things like mindfulness. We have presentations in that once a month. Uh, and we also have folks from The Rock coming over to help build some of the assets for students, because some of these students are very at risk that way. The individual plans look very similar to this. It's called the EDP. Um, and I sit down and say, this is what you've got. These are the things that you have to have. And then we have to come together and figure out what are we going to do with these electives. One of the things that, w that was the primary purpose for uh, considering this type of uh, plan was that we had a lot of students that were in uh, career and technical ed education programs, but because they failed an academic course, a core course, they could no longer take those, those courses because they had to make up the, the core courses that they missed. And so putting those core courses online, they can work on their own pace at their own time and still have time to fit in some of those areas. And uh, some of these students are ex extremely adept in, in working with their hands. They are just not the classroom kind of kids. Um, kids look to this program for a number of reasons. I, I was talking earlier with Ms. Toner here. Um, I have not advertised the PATHS program. It always makes me nervous to do that because we've only got so much room. And the first year when we were looking, I was, I was pointed to a few by the counselors who I'd identified some students that might benefit from it. I talked to them and I haven't advertised since. And uh, I'll show you how we've changed over time on that one. But these students, they've, they're typically consistently having some failure issues. They're not doing well. They're at risk of not graduating. They have some of these students, you'll find ease in their transcripts that go back um, a, a quite a long time. And so there's these holes in their learning that they've missed out. And they are also, some of them, pretty stubborn. They, they like control of what they're doing. It's one thing that they, they can, can keep control of. And they have control of their learning. It's one of the first conversations I have with them. I am putting a tool in your hand. We're here to help you. But the only way you can move from lesson to lesson is by completing it successfully. We have some students that are attendance issues. There is an initial attendance uh, requirement with this program. However, students can earn their way not to have to attend. Um, students will not attend for a variety of different reasons. And, and a lot of these things kind of interrelate. They might have health issues that keep them from attending. Um, anxiety has become a huge issue uh, at the secondary level. I've got quite a few students based on that. Um, and it gives them the chance to 
come in, get the support they need, and then work from home uh, if they need to. As long as they're on track and working, I really don't care where they're at. I just want them to be successful. They do have to come in and take tests and their exams, so I at least know that all the activities they've been completing, they do understand the content that they're required to know. And of course, sadly enough, I've got a lot of kids that are working and they're the only breadwinners for their home right now. And so they couldn't come to school if they didn't have an option like this. Our online program, from our aspect of it, is pretty all-encompassing. From credit protection as a teacher tool, to credit recovery that I talked about, the ICE that I talked about, PATH now is a district tool to help students get to graduation. We've had issues where students will get, have a long-term suspension or expulsion. And in the past, they haven't been able to continue their education. Now I can provide that outside of our schools so they can at least continue the academics. Because the last thing we want to do, we know they got in trouble, they made some bad choices, but we don't want to stunt them to becoming a, a contributing citizen. Uh, and we use it out, as, uh, out at the Juvenile care, care Center, which is a collaboration between the courts and the schools. We provide the instructional uh, setup and they take care of all the rest. And success is, is what we're striving for. Like uh, Mr. Sharo was saying, it's, it's only good if it's helping students be successful and learn what they need to learn. And so between the credit recovery percentages in the 90s, our initial credit in the 95% ranges, uh, last year was our first year with paths, and 68% of the students got back on track for their plan to graduation. And it doesn't sound like a huge number, but when you understand that that's 68% out of 100% of kids that were not on track to graduate, that's a huge number. Um, our long-term suspension data is kind of hit or miss depending on the student. It really does depend on their de determination to continue their learning. And honestly, parental support at that point because they're, they're at home, they can't come into the buildings, so they have to have that parental support. And this is our first year using something called Edgenuity IS, Instructional Services. This is a model with our Edgenuity vendor that we've used for our standard courses, which we supervise, where we continue to supervise it at the building level, but there is a teacher on the other end that they provide as well that helps students uh, in the content area stuff um, more specifically. Um, and we just, after our first semester, had a 97% success rate with that. So we're feeling pretty good about what we're able to offer kids in regards to the, uh, the uh, online range. And you can see their average grade is an 87%. That's great. I wish my, my kids had an 87% throughout their entire secondary program. So, um, and is it working? It, are kids interested in it? You know, it's funny, when we started the PATHS program, we were hoping to get 25. Matter of fact, I was praying to get 25 because it was my job <laughs> to get them in there. And so we started with 25, early in the first semester got to 35. We ended last year at 75 students. We graduated, graduated some, we dismissed others that were not being successful. So we started this year with 68 and we're already at 95. So kids, kids are looking for options and we have some nice ones to offer them. Our in, in the building programs, period by period, we started out 10 years ago with between 60 and 80 at each building uh, uh, seats, not students, because some students would take multiple courses. We are up to 200 seats in each of our high school uh, buildings, providing options for kids. So it's just one more way that we're working to try to meet the different needs and different interests area of all of our students. And online and its flexibility allows us that option. That's all I've got, any questions? Are you turning anybody away from the PATHS program? Like, do you have a list? Could it grow to more? I, I've got a wait list, yes. You have a wait list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we try to prioritize by those that, uh, that need it most, because right. certainly for, for even some good students, the flexibility of, the, of an online structure like PATHS is interesting, but it may not be the right thing for them, and they're certainly not quite our target audience yet. Um, so we look at the academic, the, those criteria, those things that uh, I had listed. You know, what are their what are their issues? How's their attendance? How are their grades? You know, are they being successful in the traditional model already? If they are, let's keep them there for now because we've got such a limited space. <laughs> if I'm just curious, like, I'm kind of new to the the schooling system. <laughs> 
Um, if you could give me the reference point for the total number of students, right? So you have some numbers as to who is in your program, but what's that fraction versus your um, total population? So our secondary is about 2,600 kids. So Jeff's got, uh, well, then two different programs here, 80 in the past, so, but then about 200 courses being taken. Yeah. And the other um, participation rate between, with both would be, um, I don't know, about 150, 200 kids are probably somewhere t participating in some of that. Between the two high schools, I would say probably closer to, between all three programs, the two high school and mine, probably near 300 kids. And so when you talked about seats and waiting, you know, sometimes we got to go slow to, to do something well. Mm -hmm. And so Jeff's growth, like we said, we kind of hoped we got 25 kids and we aimed kind of at, um, we had a few people and kids in mind, mm -hmm. and then it grew. And so we want to make sure we um, staff it right, figure out right. We still, you know, there's still a debate on what's the pro appropriate caseload. You know, is, you know, a typical classroom in the secondary level, you might say 30 students. Teacher sees 120 in a day. We, that's kind of the norm and out there. We really don't know what the norm is yet. We're trying to figure that out, and we've had lots of discussions about what is that norm and what works best. And so I think uh, we need to be careful for the next year or two as we work on it, and then um, there could be room for expansion. But as Jeff said, there's some kids that may want to come take some of these that we'll, we're going to say it's not the best course for them. Um, some of Melissa's courses to blend it maybe where they should go. Right? Yeah. And we're looking forward as these develop as, a, as something else that we can tap into because as much as online is nice and flexible and all that, what you miss, although you get me and you get the teacher and you've got that piece of it, but you really have that content expert person to, to connect with as well. Online doesn't have that specifically. And so accessing some of our own with our own teachers so we know exactly who that teacher is is uh, is pretty exciting for us in, in these two programs as well. So we get up to some of the higher level maths. Jeff and his teacher may not have actual math backgrounds, <laughs> and so sometimes you're already leaning on teachers in the in, in the building to assist on some of that. So um, we have to be careful what we do on those. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So just another option of uh, programming for our kids and. Um, you know, truly we're very blessed to have, I tell people, it doesn't matter what kind of kid you have and who you have, we have a program for them, and NPS is pretty blessed to be able to offer that. Um, we've ran data among comparing ourselves to others in the state, and I'm not sure anybody runs this number of courses and different programs as, as we have, and so there's some growth here. I think there's some, a lot of learning still to be done here, so we're in those early stages. Um, universities may be a little bit further ahead of us on some of that, but they're certainly, their learners are probably a little more independent as well and so we got to be careful of how independent how ready are all those students to do that so but we, we will close the video portion of it but we'll certainly stick around for any questions you may have okay thank, thank you for your time Thanks.